Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at an unpredictable Cyclone deck, a 5-mana enchantment that we can cycle for 2 mana, but if we actually play it, it's as if a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause us to draw a card. Instead, we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card, and we can cast that card without paying its mana cost. So if we have Cyclone in play and cycle a sorcery, let's say we cycle a boon of the Wishgiver, instead of drawing a card from the cycling ability, we exile cards until we hit another sorcery, which could be another copy of Boon of the Wishgiver, but that's not too bad, because then we get to draw four cards for just one mana. But we could also hit an Inspired Ultimatum, which can deal five damage to any target, gain five life and draw five cards, which is quite the upgrade. So all that for just one mana. Then we also have a creature with cycling, a Yadaro Wandering Monster, that we normally cycle for one and a red, but if we actually cycle it with Unpredictable Cyclone in play, Yadaro is the only creature in our deck, so if we cycle it we're guaranteed to hit another copy after shuffling it back, and then we get an 8-8 Trample Haste creature for just 2 mana, which is a pretty good deal. And finally, if we have a copy of Cyclone in play and cycle another Cyclone from our hand, we've got a chance of hitting a copy of Shark Typhoon. As a 6-mana enchantment, it says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we create an XX blue shark creature token with flying where X is that spell's converted mana cost, but we can also cycle Shark Typhoon itself for X1 and a blue to make an XX blue shark creature token with flying at instant speed. Cannot be countered, can even cycle it with a Teferi in play. Speaking of Teferi Time Raveler, that's a card we don't want to face with this deck, since it prevents us from casting a spell for free with our unpredictable Cyclone in play, so it kind of shuts down our entire deck. But uh, yeah, that's the basic gist of it, so we've got this entire package of creatures and sorceries that we can maybe cheat into play with our Cyclone, as well as the Shark Typhoon, and of course we do have a chance of hitting another Cyclone if we cycle an enchantment, so that's not what we want to see most of the time, but uh, there's always a chance that we hit a Shark Typhoon, which is a payoff for cycling enchantments. So this is kind of the cycling package, and then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're kind of a blue-red control deck, just splashing a bit of white for Narset of the Ancient Way, as well as potentially letting us hardcast Inspired Ultimatum. We could easily include some of the other off-color ultimatums without having the mana to cast them, but I prefer having access to mana to actually play the ultimatums if we happen to draw them in the late game, so we don't end up with a bunch of dead cards in hand. So if we sort a deck by curve, Boon would essentially be a 1-drop we can cycle for 1 mana, Yudaro is a 2-drop, and then Shark Typhoon can kind of fit in the curve wherever we want. Now, because we're playing a Cyclone deck, we're not allowed to play any additional creatures or sorceries, because those would interfere with our Cyclone hitting Inspired Ultimatum and Hidaro. So we don't get to play sweepers like Shatter the Sky, and instead we need to play more instants, and in this case we get access to Flame Sweep as our sweeper, dealing 2 damage to each creature except for creatures we control with flying, which can also synergize with our smaller shark tokens. Then at 2 mana we've got Scorching Dragonfire as a 2 mana instant, dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, and also exiles it. We've got Thrill of Possibility to help us loot away inspired ultimatums that we can cast, or additional lands that we don't need, and draw 2 cards. And then we've got Narset, Part of Veils, which can also help us assemble the various combo pieces with the minus 2. And the passive ability can also be very effective, preventing the opponent from drawing more than 1 card each turn. Then we also have two copies of Narset of the Ancient Way, which can help us hardcast Inspired Ultimatum with the plus one ability gaining two life and adding blue, red or white to our mana pool that we can spend on non-creature spells. The minus two lets us draw a card and then discard a card, and if we discard a non-land card, Narset deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or planeswalker, so we can discard Ultimatum to deal seven damage to a creature or planeswalker. And then minus six can also double up as an extra win condition, letting us deal two damage to any target whenever we cast a non-creature spell. And then of course we've got our Shark Typhoon, Cyclone and Inspired Ultimatum. Now we could easily include the Fairy Time Reveler in the deck ourselves as a very powerful planeswalker, but uh, hopefully by not playing the Fairy we don't have to face it too often in our games today, since it does shut down our unpredictable Cyclone otherwise. And then going over the mana base, we've got four of the Jeskai Triome, all 12 Shocklands with four Sacred Foundry, four Steam Vents and four Hallowed Fountain, and then five Basic Mountains and five Basic Islands. Don't need a ton of white mana just for Narset and eventually for Ultimatum, which we often want to try and cheat into play anyway, so we don't need access to a lot of white mana in the deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the play. Missing red mana here. So it's a little awkward. I can always cycle the Shark Typhoon. And then once we find red mana, we can cycle Idaru to find more red for Cyclone, but it's pretty slow. Yeah, I don't think I can keep this. This is better. And then... Could bottom one of the Triomes, maybe. Facing a Temple of Deceit. Don't know yet if I'm gonna cycle Boon of the Wishgiver, since I do want to keep it in hand post-Cyclone, if possible. Polywalk Symbiote, interesting. Alright. Was not expecting a creature to Dragonfire here with the turn 1 Temple of Deceit, otherwise I could've use it end of turn. I'll just wait for now. And then just main phase kill this before they get to use a discount. And then hold Boon in hand since we have five lands for Cyclone already. Shark Typhoon is a nice one. Can make a 2-2 two -two Shark end of turn. Brazen Borrower. So maybe your opponent on a blue-black flash slash uh, mutate deck with the Dirge Bat and Sea Dasher Octopus and the likes. Bouncing Shore Shark to save the Brazen Borrower. Yeah, it's gotta be better to Dragonfire and play Narset and play Cyclone here. Get to take out their uh, only threats and resolve a Planeswalker. I have practiced against meditate and prepare. Think I'll take another Cyclone in case the other one gets countered and I can always cycle it if we resolve one of them to maybe hit a Shark Typhoon. Thoughtfulness before action. It's another interesting spot. Could take another boon to cycle with Cyclone in play. Narset's also tempting. Let's take a boon. And then cast Cyclone. And see if they counter it. Neutralize. Fair enough. So next turn we can try again. Stone Cold for 4, keeps up 2 mana. Could be for Quench, in which case I would like to find another land, and we did. So we'll play this untapped. Alright, let's spin the wheel. Brazen Borrower the Cyclone in response, and we'll cycle again. Now I can kill the Stone Cold because it has protection from multicolored, but we'll just go face. So target player gains 5 life. Target our opponents and draw 5. And then draw a card from the Cycled Boon. Alright, I mean we can just hard cast these ultimatums at this point. Maybe play Shark Typhoon first, so we start making 7-7 seven, seven Sharks. Sea Dasher Octopus mutated. So 
So I don't have any great way of killing the octopus, just gotta try and block it with our shark tokens. Narsa does prevent a card draw at least. Yeah, I think I'm down to just cast Typhoon here. Guess we'll play around Quench. And then pass a turn. Dirge Bats, all right, gets to kill Narsets. So I'm taking 10. Still have much to learn. But we do get to untap with Shark Typhoon in play. Could cast another Shark Typhoon first, but I think I want to make sure I gain the life here. So let's uh, ultimatum killing the Brazen Borrower. That should be fine. So I'll gain five. And then uh, just play this tapped for now. And what do I discard to hand size? I don't have any sorceries left in my deck, so Cyclone's not super useful anymore. Would only be good if we find Idaro. But I guess I'll hang on to one Cyclone. Opponent cycles neutralize. Do I have any Cyclones left in the deck? I don't, so I guess if I cycle Shark Typhoon with Cyclone in play, I do hit another Shark Typhoon, which is pretty nice. So, I guess we'll start there. Cast okay, Cyclone. And then um, I can get another Shark Typhoon going. Let's attack with the shark. Opponent takes it. And then uh, I guess we can pass a turn. Or maybe upkeep. Make a move. Alright, if they're gonna scry with castle, I'll do it end of turn. Cycle this for one. Guaranteed to hit another Shark Typhoon. And then I can thrill making some more sharks. All right. 26 cards left in library. Double symbiotes, it's not gonna do it here. Alright, sweet game against uh, Demir Mutate Flash. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. I've got a reasonable hand, it's pretty land light, but I can use Thrill and Cycle Idara maybe to find one. Probably gonna end up discarding Ultimatum to Thrill. Put it on a Gates deck. It's been a while since we faced one of those. And then it's probably fine to cycle one of the Cyclones. Don't expect the first one to get countered. Gatebreaker Ram, 
four four, so it does survive my Dragonfire, sadly. Now I could also keep Cyclone in hand to then use Narsa to kill the Ram next turn, maybe that's the play. And this turn do nothing. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Because I want to keep Yudara for post Cyclone. And then turn 5 Cyclone, turn 6 we get to make an 8-8, eight eight. hopefully find Boon of the Wishgiver. Not a ram. Hmm. So maybe the play is to kill the ram after all, discarding Yidaro. And then just cast Cyclone, hope to find more payoffs along the way. Could also discard Dragonfire, cast Dragonfire to kill it, and wait another turn on Cyclone. Well, let's try that instead. And our opponent's probably also playing Gate Colossus, which does match up pretty nicely against our Yudaro. So this might be a tough matchup. Gross Barrel, at least they don't have a Guild Summit in play yet to draw them extra cards. Next turn I could also just hard cast Inspired Ultimatum, I guess. There's Gate Colossus, times two. I think I'm gonna wait with Cycling Yudara so we can actually block a Gate Colossus. There's a guild summit I was afraid of. Opponent gets to draw four if they want. And they can redraw the gate colossus, although they don't have eight gates in play, so they were one mana short of replaying it this turn. Well, we're definitely in trouble here. So I'll gain five. Was hoping to find a Boon of the Wishgiver here. Instead, Shark Typhoon. Narset is pretty effective against Gil Summit, but opponent can take out Narset pretty easily. So to get a free Gate Colossus. Gets to draw a lot of cards. Don't know if they have any other win conditions besides Gate Colossus and Ram. There's Hidaro again. Let's start with... Maybe I should cycle Shark Typhoon in the hopes of hitting another Typhoon. I have two Cyclones left, so I'm more likely to find another Typhoon than I am Cyclone. And then if I play Narset, I get a 3-3. Yeah, let's just cycle this without making a shark, or I can make a 3-3 shark that can chump a Colossus, which is going to cost me 5 mana. But then I might not have enough mana to do everything else I want this turn. So let's cycle for 0. I 
All right, we hit Typhoon. Now my sharks will probably end up dying to a Gates Ablaze. Thrill. All right, so we'll pass a turn and then I can make some more creatures at instant speed. Opponent's also playing Dragonfire. They could have killed Narset with it. So maybe they don't have a Gates Ablaze in hand. I guess Gates Ablaze would kill their own Colossus too now, since they have more than eight Gates in play. So they probably don't want to play it. Both go face. So we'll cycle Idaro. And then I won't be able to block Colossus with a 2-2 Shark. So there's no real point in casting these right now. So both of my Yidaros are gone, so it's going to be tricky to win the game here. It's going to be Shark Tokens to get across the finish line. Now Narsa does prevent the card draw here. And Archway Angel to gain the opponent a ton of life. Yep. I go for Boon of the Wishgiver here. And then probably start by cycling it. Hit Ultimatum. Kill Angel. I could kill Gate Colossus combined with the uh, Dragonfire here. Then we're probably going to see a Gates Ablaze from our opponents. So I don't want to make more Sharks this turn. But I could make some end of turn with Boon of the Wishgiver. So we'll stay put. Alright, never mind, so they must not have Gates Ablaze in hand then. Never mind, not sure why they played Gate Colossus first then. And then end of turn, we're gonna cycle some more. Maybe I should cycle Shark Typhoon, although I might end up casting it. Yeah, let's just cycle Boon. Hit Ultimatum. And then do I have any sorceries left at this point? All my ultimatums are gone. These are all my boons. So cycling sorceries doesn't accomplish anything anymore. In terms of enchantments, I have one cyclone left in the deck and no shark typhoons, I believe. So we're running pretty low on cards in deck. So I guess we'll just uh, thrill end of turn. And 
and untap. Get in there for nine. And I'm just gonna cast another Typhoon. Play Narsets. Just gain some life for now. Above all else, enlightenment begins within. Said I need another gates ablaze for starters. Archway Angel. We'll definitely bind him some time. So let's see, Poon's at 43. Definitely just gonna cast another Typhoon. 14 cards left. Yeah, I can minus Narset twice here. Now I might be better off not casting the Typhoon this turn. Although I do have two more boons I can cast afterwards, even if they do have another Gates Ablaze. So sure. And I still have enough cards in library where I can actually cast Boon without decking. Another Angel. And our opponent concedes, all right. <laughs> Triple Shark Typhoon getting the job done. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. Yeah, I guess this is fine. I'm missing blue for Narset, but with uh, Yudaros, I'm pretty likely to find some blue mana. This is the Mono White Enchantment deck, presumably. So finding some removal would be nice. So I could also Thrill instead of cycling Idaro. Probably won't have time to play both Narsets, is my guess. I'll take one. That's fine. Scorching Dragonfire is a good one. And then I could also cycle Boon. I'll just take two, but if they move in with an enchantment, then we might respond with Dragonfire. All Sades. So, do I want a dragon fire in response? Man, if we find a flame sweep, that would be nice. I think I just let that resolve. And then give myself the best chance of finding a flame sweep by cycling twice. Cyclone's not bad. Still probably Cycle Boon. Even though I want to keep some for Cyclone. Alright, so no Flame Sweep, but maybe Narset can find it. Although then I will be tapped out of Scorching Dragonfire, so they could move in with an All That Glitters and hit me pretty hard. Although I guess they only have the three enchantments in play at that point. So maybe it's fine. Alternatively, I can... Cycle some Idaros, although I want to keep one in hand for Cyclone. Those who cannot perceive beyond the meditate and 
No flame sweeps, but Shark Typhoon's nice, another Dragonfire's nice. Let's go with Typhoon. The opponent knowing about it makes it a little bit less effective as a way of ambushing, but still gives me a flying creature. End of turn, solid footing on the Healer's Hawk. So we could see in all that glitters. We do not. Now, of course, our opponent doesn't know that we don't have uh, Shatter the Sky in the deck, so they might be playing a little bit around it. And our opponent just passes. So I could tap out for Cyclone. What happens if they all that glitters me? I don't think I die, but it's gonna hurt. But maybe that's still my best uh, line here. Yidaro can block the flyers, but it can block Ginger Brood at least. And then hopefully we get lucky with a Cyclone here. If we cycle Typhoon, we could hit another Typhoon. Which can start generating shark tokens. Not our solid footing. So they're gearing up for maybe a glitters here. Nope. I think if they had it, we would have died here. With five enchantments total. Yeah, it would have been just enough to kill me. So they don't have glitters in hand, that's good to know. Ultimatum not exactly what we were hoping to draw. So I could shock myself. So I can cycle Typhoon, cycle Idaro and play Dragonfire. Is that worth it? Cycling Typhoon's only beneficial if we hit another Typhoon, so Dragonfire makes a 2-2 Shark. And a 2-2 Shark prevents 2 damage, which is a damage I take by shocking in the Sacred Foundry, so it's probably not worth it then. So maybe the play is Cycle Typhoon for one. Hope to hit another Typhoon and Dragonfire anyway. And not Cycle Idaro. If I Cycle Idaro, that can go in front of Ginger Brute or Alsaid. I can Dragonfire, but our opponent definitely has a protection spell in hand, given that they haven't been doing anything in the meantime. I think I go for the Typhoon play instead. That's fine. Hit Shark Typhoon, all right, that's good. So now I can Dragonfire and make a 2-2 token. So what do we attempt to kill? Maybe go for Healer's Hawk, that way another solid footing can save it, unlike the Hushbringer. Ah, it's gonna be Karamatra's Blessing instead, fair enough. So I have to jump here, and then I could block here, take three. Solid footing. Doesn't kill me. Sure.
Narset of the Ancient Way is a nice one. So definitely want to cycle Idara to be able to block Ginger Brute and then Narset. Could just plus to gain some life and then next turn Hardcast Ultimatum to gain even more life. Let's do that instead. Although, God's willing, giving protection from blue could be bad for me. It's gonna be a Glaring Aegis. Taps down Shark, that's definitely relevant. Just need to survive one more turn. Another Aegis, taps down a Shark. Yeah, that's gonna be game over, sadly, even with the Idara blocking Ginger Brute. Let's see if they had any more tricks up their sleeve. God's willing protection from reds, maybe. Definitely a close game. If we had drawn an untapped land, we can maybe cast ultimatum there, gain five and make a 7-7 seven, seven shark and try and stabilize that way, although we might have still died to double glaring ages. Either way, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Some early interaction with Dragonfire, and then we've got our Cyclone to maybe combine with Shark Typhoon. Facing Sacred Foundry. And a fresh face recruits. Interesting. Another one. Not sure what's going on over there, but I guess I'll kill it. Can thrill discarding fountain or islands. Double white could be useful if we find ultimatum later. Opponent does nothing. So I'm a little confused as to what's going on in the opponent's deck. Let's take out a recruit, it's too powerful. Strike with the cunning mind of the dragon. And the next turn, thanks to Narset, we can play Cyclone and Cycle Boon in the same turn. Alright, never mind. Legionnaire is gonna take out Narset. So we'll have to wait an extra turn. That's all right. So we're facing the Boros Legion, apparently. All right, so where do we want to start? Could also just cast Shark Typhoon this turn before we start going off. I think at 14 life we can probably afford to. Or I could cycle Typhoon and hope to get lucky. Although there's a higher chance we hit another Cyclone than we are to hit another Shark Typhoon. Maybe this is unnecessary, like I could have cycled Typhoon, cycled two Boons, and we would probably be in great shape. Now if something happens to my Cyclone, it's not going to be great for me. 
All right, we hit another cyclone, so I guess we start there in case we hit another typhoon. We sure did. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty gross turn. Could do this at instant speed as well. I don't have to do it now. But we could draw into some more planeswalkers we want to play. Spared ultimatum. I'll gain the five. Could also go face. Make two seven seven sharks, and we had another boon to follow up, and who knows what else we would have drawn here. Alright, so didn't face the most uh, competitive deck here in the last game, let's say. But at least we got to showcase what the deck is capable of when we're not uh, dying on turn 4. So overall, the deck's pretty fun to play. It's never going to be competitive with the fairy being in standard and basically shutting down our entire deck. So uh, don't expect it to perform in the uh, ranked ladders. But uh, as a janky deck, it's pretty fun to play. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.